Every so often, I will come across a story from centuries ago. Heck, I've even gone back close to 2,000 years for one story that I told already. Today, we are going back to the year 1666 to look at the Great Fire of London. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History, now in its second year from the Weather Network in Canada. Today, we pick things up at the end and look back at what happened between the dates September 2nd and September 6th on this day in weather history during the legendary Great London Fire. All right, first thing, straight up, you must remember that London, England, before it was the city that we know today as the center of British culture, was the center of the Roman Empire. And this fire swept through the central parts of the city from Sunday, September 2nd through the 6th of 1666. And among the collateral damage was a total gutting of the medieval city of London inside the old Roman city wall. So just what happened? The answer is inside of what didn't happen. You see, after two rainy summers in the years 1664 and 1665, things dried up. Like, literally dried up. Since that last rainfall in November of 1665, London went on to suffer a catastrophically crippling drought, and with buildings of that time being made completely out of wood, they were therefore tinder dry after the long, hot summer of 1666, and in a very precarious state should a fire ever break out. And this is 1666, so things like these are known to happen. The Great Fire started in a local bakery, known back then as a baker's house, on, ironically perhaps, a street known as Pudding Lane. Welcome to year two of this podcast. Right now, you're listening to the full version of today's story on your favorite podcast provider, but there's also the daily podcast video short. They're shot right here in my podcast recording studio, so you get that perspective, but oftentimes they will include visuals from that day's event from when it happened in weather history. So after listening to the full story, go check out the podcast video short on television or online anytime at theweathernetwork.com forward slash weather history. It started shortly after midnight on the 2nd, and as a result of the tinder dry buildings I mentioned a moment ago spread rapidly across London. In its sweep of the city, it destroyed 13,200 houses, 87 parish churches, St. Paul's Cathedral, and most of the buildings of the city authorities. It is estimated to have destroyed the homes of 70,000 of the 80,000 citizens of the city at that time. Officially, only six deaths were recorded. However, the true death toll is unknown. Some historians believe that the deaths of poorer citizens were never recorded and that the heat of the fire may have cremated them, leaving no way to account for a true number. Now, why would they have come to that conclusion? It seems rather extreme when you first hear it. But today, on display at the Museum of London, there is a piece of melted pottery found by archaeologists on Pudding Lane, where the fire started. This artifact has been determined to have melted under a temperature that reached 1,250 degrees Celsius. That's close to 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit. So needless to say, the major firefighting techniques of 1666 were likely insufficient to battle that level of inferno. So what did they do? It was common practice to create fire breaks by way of controlled demolition, but that extreme of a measure obviously needed to be authorized by the mayor. And Lord Mayor of London, Sir Thomas Bloodworth, took a lot of time mulling over the situation because obviously a lot of people did not want their buildings being destroyed to help fight a fire. But it is said that this indecisiveness allowed the weather to take control. When a wind blew through on Sunday, fanning the flames of the bakery fire into a full-on firestorm that actually fed itself and created its own weather, that rendered any plan to try and head it off totally useless now. This fire was out of control. And then the fire pushed north through the next day and into the heart of London. By Tuesday, the fire spread over most of the city. This is when it destroyed St. Paul's Cathedral and continued to leap the river fleet and threaten King Charles II's court at Whitehall. The firefighting efforts now had to be stepped up exponentially. They were now fighting a war. There needed to be a unified front against this enemy. And 
there needed to be luck. Enter the weather again in this story. The Great Fire of London was overcome because of two factors. A, the fire breaks were effectively set up by the Tower of London's security garrison who used gunpowder to create the effect of fire breaks and this prevented any further movement east. And B, that strong easterly wind I told you about that caused its rapid spread while the mayor sat undecided, well, it finally died down. This is how the Great Fire of London was finally extinguished on September 6th of 1666, this day in weather history. Tomorrow is September 7th, and back in 1991, the hail capital of Canada, Calgary, Alberta, was shredded by a 30-minute hailstorm. Now, at first you may think, hey, wait a minute here, 30 minutes? After all these hurricane stories and what we just found out that happened in London, how is this impactful? That's why we're talking about this tomorrow. On this day in weather history, with me, your host, Chris May.